Hey, what's going on, everyone? All right, the first show I want to talk about is Jakar's Young Lions Cup. This is the Young Lions Cup 8. I believe this is Jakar's longest-running event. They've been doing this maybe since 2003, every single year. So, yeah, the Young Lions Cup, uh, basically, I think you have to be under 25 years old to participate and pretty much showcases a lot of the up-and-coming independent wrestling talent throughout the East Coast. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I wasn't impressed with a lot of these guys, especially on night one. Night one was definitely the weakest show uh, of these bunch. And I, I would say that night one is probably the weakest independent wrestling show of the year. I, I just wasn't feeling it. But uh, a lot of these matches, some of them were okay. You know, the Jakar guys really shined here. They really had to carry the bulk of uh, the wrestling. It wasn't awful, but I would still, say it was still pretty much weak. Um, Andy Ridge actually made an appearance on this show. Now, I want to talk about Andy Ridge first. Ring of Honor is actually, or actually Delirious, is really pushing him hard with this pro wrestling respect promotion. And uh looks like he's going to be joining the ROH roster as a permanent member eventually. But, yeah, I I'm very, very surprised uh, he's gotten as far as he's he's gotten so far. Like, I, I actually sat next to him at Final Battle 2007. So I, I had no idea that this, this kid was trying to become a wrestler. It's really shocking the shit out of me. But... Uh, yeah, but as far as this show goes, you know, you had, uh, this is pretty much just Frightmare's show. They just wanted to get him into the finals. So it's basically like Survival of the Fittest. They have all these qualifying matches, and then, you know, six guys meet in the finals. They have an elimination match. It came down to Frightmare and Akira Tozawa. This could have been a lot better. I still enjoyed it, though. The main event was still good. So Frightmare advanced. That was night one. All right, so we'll move on to night two. Night two was uh, the best show out of these. I would just say that at Definitely. This show was uh, pretty much, you know, I wouldn't say it was great. i say it was really, really good. Um, the first half was kind of tough, you know, to sit through, actually. The talent here was better, though. A lot of the guys that they brought in did impress me. They brought in a lot of interesting names, a lot of interesting characters, actually. Uh, but, you know, this show, the best qualifying matchup for sure is Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly. You know, pretty much like other people have said, you know, it's kind of like an Evolve match or an ROH-style match in Chikara. So it kind of felt like a breath of fresh air. It got a great reaction. They were chanting, this match rules. I mean, O'Reilly and uh, Cole, you know, they're part of the ROH roster right now. These guys are definitely the future. They really impressed the shit out of me here. And uh, in my opinion, this is probably the best match of the whole uh, weekend. So, And then we had some pretty good tag, tag matches. You had the Super Smash Brothers versus 3.0. Excellent, you know, tag team match. And you had Mike Quackenbush and Jigsaw. They took on uh, the House of Truth, which was pretty solid. And then in the main event. You had, uh, you know, great heel tactics from the uh, BDK referee, uh, Derek Zabato here. He was, uh, you know, like other people have said, he was awesome this whole weekend. He really brought a lot of drama to these shows. And, uh, you know, Lince Dorado actually advanced. And uh, a great effort by Ophidian from the Osirian portal. He put up a great fight. I thought the, the finals between Ophidian and Lince were uh, extraordinary. That stuff was awesome between those two guys. So, yeah, and then Young Lions Cup 3. I'm, I'm sorry, Young Lions Cup 8 Night 3. This is pretty much a one-match show, or I'm sorry, a two-match show. They basically have this Royal Rumble type of thing. It's called the Countdown Showdown. Uh, Johnny Gargano actually won that. It was pretty entertaining. I enjoyed it. Uh, the undercard is pretty weak, actually. I was disappointed with a lot of the stuff on the undercard. But, uh, yeah, the, the Young Lions Cup final match between uh, Lince Dorado and Frightmare was awesome. I probably give it four stars. Just excellent stuff. Tremendous action. Tremendous drama. Uh, a great crowd reaction when Frightmare actually defeated uh, Lince Dorado. Uh, he was against all odds. He overcame the evil referee uh, Derek Sabato and uh, won the Young Lions Cup. An awesome moment here. So I would definitely check these shows out. I would actually check out night two and three. You could pretty much skip night one, but I would definitely try to get your hands on at least night two. All right, and I want to talk about Jakar's show of the year so far. You know, I, I would say, you know, some people are speculating that this might not be Jakar's show of the year. Maybe Chikorosaurus Rex. I, I wouldn't agree with that. I think, young, um, what's it called? The King of Trios. I thought King of Trios as a whole. Those are the shows to get from Chikara. But as far as just one show, I would still have to say this is definitely the show to get. Uh, this is Chikara's New York City debut through Savage Progress Cuss the Jungle Line featuring uh, Manami Toyota. I talked about this show before. I talked about the live... Uh, I did a live review of it, but yeah, this DV on DVD, it came out awesome. Had an awesome crowd. You know, this crowd really made the show, in my opinion. Had some great matches. This is features uh, Jakar's opener of the year. A 3.0 taking on... A uh, 3.0 and Soldier Ant taking on Fist. That was an excellent, excellent opener. And then you had, uh, you know, the, uh, the Soul Touches match against the BDK. That was extremely fun. Just a lot of good stuff in this show. And like I said, this this has uh, Jakar's match of the year on it, in my opinion. I think everyone seems to agree with that. You know, Mike Quackenbush and Minami Toyota, 
versus Claudio Castanoli and Sarah Del Rey. Excellent match. This this is Chikara's match of the year. So yeah, this is definitely the Chikara show to pick up. I really hope uh, True Slayer would uh, review this. I think he could uh, give this a lot of attention. I, I would just be interested to see what he thought of it. But yeah, definitely uh, pick the show up. Like I said, if you want to pick up one show from Chikara this year through Savage Progress, Cuss the Jungle Line, uh, Chikara's Brooklyn, New York City debut. I would definitely uh, try to get your hands on this. All right, so next up, I want to talk about Dragon Gate USA's Bushido, Code of the Warrior, the internet pay-per-view. Um, I have to say I was slightly disappointed. I thought this felt a little bit too indie. You know, it, it, I thought this was probably a poor location to have the first uh, internet pay-per-view for Dragon Gate. You know, they, they ran it in Massachusetts, and just wasn't a lot of people there. It just didn't feel like the mega atmosphere that, uh, you know, the Philadelphia show had uh, entered the Dragon 2009 or Untouchable 2009 from Chicago. Those shows had hot crowds, but this crowd... You know, it felt like more like a, uh, looked like a Chikara, you know, like a B-show for a Chikara event. I mean, that, that, it just didn't seem like there was a lot of people there. Um, and the crowd was kind of mediocre. They really weren't into any of these guys. They, You could tell they just wanted to see great wrestling. But even when the matches got great, they still weren't reacting that well. So it was kind of a tough show to sit through. I, I don't like watching stuff on GoFi Live. I don't even want, like watching stuff uh, wrestling on the Internet, on the computer. It's just, it's just not my thing. I find it very, very tough to do. I don't know why. Maybe it's just me, but uh, yeah, let's talk about the show. All right, the opening match. Yeah, Ricochet, Eric Cannon, Johnny Gargano, and Chuck Taylor. I mean, uh, what can I say? I mean, it was a fun opener, a lot of spots, just very, very good stuff. You know, a great showcase match. I believe uh, Chuck Taylor actually got the victory, a good win for him. Everyone looked impressive here. I didn't see the uh, Enter the Dragon uh, spot fest match, but uh, I imagine this probably wasn't as good as that. But, you know, next up we have Rich Swan versus Homicide. Pretty mediocre. I mean, I'm not that impressed with Homicide so far. I think Dirty White Boy said a while back he gained a lot of weight. I haven't even seen him in like a year. I haven't seen any matches from Homicide in a year. And, yeah, kind of disappointed by him. I'm sure he'll get back into the swing of things. He's even mentioned in the video wires that he doesn't want to get soft. or He, does, he wants to make sure that TNA didn't make him soft. So we'll see what happens there. But I thought they did a great job of building up Rich Swan. I, I haven't seen a lot of him. But, you know, he got into the mix with Aries. I thought... You know, I think Gabe Sapolsky does a great job of, uh, you know, creating stars to a degree. I mean, I know some people are very, very negative on Gabe Sapolsky since he uh, left ROH, but I just think he does a great job with the undercard guys. It seems like everyone has a purpose there in Dragon Gator and Evolve, and uh, it doesn't really feel that way to me in ROH sometimes, but I would just say that. But yeah, great promo by Austin Aries. It was from the heart. It made a lot of sense. You know, he talked about MMA. And how MMA is hot right now, and how pro wrestling doesn't respect itself. Uh, you know, he's talked about how he's a man of honor, while you know, all these people in professional wrestling don't have any honor. So it, it was really, really interesting. I'm, I'm not sure if that was a subliminal message to ROH or whatever, but I really enjoyed it. Him and Masato Yoshino, honestly, I have to say, it was disappointing. I mean, it was good stuff, actually. You know, Yoshino hit some really awesome submissions. It, it was technically, it was, it was more of a map based match, actually. Um, it wasn't as explosive and it wasn't as athletic and uh, high flying as I would have wanted it to be. I mean, Aries and, and Yoshino, these are two of the best high flying guys in the business. So I just thought, I thought they could have done a little bit more, but uh, technically, this was very, very solid. It was uh, a great wrestling match. Um, pretty mediocre crowd, though. I mean, this could have been a lot better, but, you know, pretty much what it is. I, I would say one of Austin Aries' better matches in recent memory, but still uh, slightly disappointing. Uh, next up, we get John Moxie and Jimmy Jacobs. I quit match. Uh, very impressed with Jacobs here. He's really slimmed down. Looks like he's been in the gym. Totally different from the age of the fall, you know, Jimmy Jacobs when he was on uh, painkillers and drugs and alcohol and all that stuff. But, yeah, he, he looked good out there. Him and Moxie had a pretty solid I quit match. It wasn't amazing. Like, they didn't kill each other. There were some pretty cool things in the match, though. You know, Jacobs did a crossbody off the top of the balcony, which was cool. They took out the spikes. It was very, very bloody. Uh, Moxie's in pretty good shape. You know, he's a lot. He's in a lot better shape than I uh, thought he was in. Actually, pretty lean. And he's pretty athletic. So, uh, a pretty good slugfest there. A good I quit match. Not not amazing. I probably give it like three and three quarter, bordering into four stars. Um, what else? I mean, Yamato and Akira Tozawa versus Sima and Genki Horiguchi. Honestly, you know, I gotta agree. This kind of dragged. It was very very tough to get into. Uh, you know, this would probably come off a lot better on DVD. But uh, good tag team wrestling here. Uh, pretty standard stuff, nothing amazing. You know, we've seen better Dragon Gate tag matches in the past, but, you know, this this probably was great to see live. 
Uh, I mean, just great tag team action. Pretty much all I can say about it. You know, kind of under-delivered. It didn't blow anyone away, but it was still good, though. And then we have B.B. Hulk versus Shingo for the Open the Freedom Gate Championship. Uh, it's not as good as the Kobe match that they had in, in Japan from the summertime. That match was insane. But this was uh, this was still great, though. I mean, the, the last couple minutes were just awesome, in my opinion. Shingo hit some sick lariats. They, they just have good chemistry. For some reason, B.B. Hulk has better chemistry with Shingo than uh, Masato Yoshino or... Uh, the Dragon Kid and guys like that. I mean, they, they just made for a great combination. A good combination of power versus speed, or power versus uh, charisma, I would say that. Something like that. I thought B.B. Hulk has a lot of charisma. I, I like the way he moves. I don't think he's the best choice to be the uh, champion right now. But uh, I, I'm thinking that since they had B.B. Hulk retain, I was shocked that he retained, but I'm thinking maybe, uh, you know, there's rumor that, that, that Moxie might end up with the championship, which is good because I think now, you could have the uh, Open the Freedom Gate Championship defend, defend it in Evolve now, which would bring a lot more importance to the Evolve show. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking they're probably going to go in that direction. But yeah, this is a good show. I'll probably give it like an 8.0. But, uh, you know, this wasn't like the second best pay-per-view of the year or one of the top five pay-per-views of the year. Like, uh, I think some of us might have been expecting. So. All right, and next up, I want to give you my thoughts on uh, ROH on HDNet from this week. Th this is pretty much a, uh, I wouldn't say it's a, a, a skippable show or a passable show. It, it was it was mediocre, I would say that. Mediocre to pretty good, actually. Um, you know, we had Eddie Edwards. He took on uh, Rhett Titus in the, in the uh, opening match. It, it was good. It was pretty stiff. Uh, uh, Edwards actually did a, a suicide dive, and I think he hurt himself. I think he hurt his wrist, and I think... Uh, Red Titus hurt his back or hurt his neck. So, you know, the, the ending was kind of abrupt. Uh, this had potential, but it could have been a lot better. Then we had Sarah Del Rey. She had a squash match over uh, someone. It was a good match to build up Sarah Del Rey. She, she kicked the shit out of this girl. So that, that was a good a good set, like extended squash, I would say. That. I'm trying to think of some of the segments. They they did a good job building up the Davy Richards, Eddie Edwards split from Shane Hagador and uh, talked about that. The Kings Wrestling and the Briscoes, they focus on that a lot with uh, Papa Briscoe. You know, I would say the Pop Briscoe thing is, is cool because uh, it, it really brings a lot of interest back to the Kings Wrestling Briscoe's feud, which has kind of taken a little vacation over the last couple of months. But um, they're bringing it back now, so that's pretty good. Um, and then the main event, you had uh, Kevin, Steen, El Kevin Steen and uh, Steve Carino taking on El Generico and Colt Cabana. You know, I, I'm kind of tired of, uh, you know, I've said before that the feud is a little bit overrated. I I'm not, when I say it's overrated, I'm not talking about Steen versus Generico. I'm just talking about Colt Cabana. And, uh, you know, Steve Carino's involvement in this feud. I just think it's been going on a little bit way too long. And uh, But, you know, it makes sense, though. You know, it makes sense that we finally get a blow-off match on HDNet between these two teams. You know, this doesn't compare to their match from Chicago. Their match from Chicago at Bitter Friends, Stiffer Enemies, too. That was an insane, bloody war. But this th this was good, though. I mean, it was a good cage match. Nothing special. Um, you know, the, the ending was... Uh, well, before I get into the ending, there was some good stuff in this match. You know, Generic hit a lot of Yakuza's into the cage. It was pretty bloody. Not that bloody, though, but semi-bloody. And then the ending, you know, had, you had Kevin Steen actually push. Well, actually, Cabana actually told Generico to do a splash off of the top of the cage. And then while uh, Generico was climbing up top, Steen actually pushes Cabana into the cage. And then Generico falls out of the cage. And they pretty much just rape Cabana, leave him bloody. And uh, that's pretty much the end of the match. So uh, it, it was it was an okay addition of HDNet. I, I wouldn't say it was must-see, but... Uh, you know, they, could, they can't put on an amazing show every single week, but uh, they're definitely worth checking out. It was pretty easy to sit through. It was, it was a good show.